Do you need speedy reactions and simple coding? Then interrupts are a good thing to use. And because interrupts have things in common with deep sleep, we will also dig into that topic. And we will find some secrets of the ESP32. For sure, we will look under its hood. Maybe you find a hint to improve or simplify your project, or you find out why it does not perform as you want. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. In this video we will use interrupts for fast reaction time and simplicity. Compare it with a standard sketch. We learn how to debug real-time sketches, find unwanted behavior, and check how the wake-up works and how we can optimize current consumption. First, we will concentrate on fast reactions and simplicity. Most applications need to monitor and react to signals from the real world. In standard programming, we have to pull an input pin in each loop and respond if an event is detected. If this signal is too short, our sketch will not recognize it. This is easily possible, primarily if we work with delays. If an outside event occurs during this delay statement, our MCU will not detect it. This is why people say good practice is to avoid delay statements wherever possible. In the other scenario, we want to save power and the outside signals are rare. Then we want to sleep our ESP32 like Dishka for the whole day. Only on an external event, she wakes up and moves. Maybe from time to time, she also gets hungry and has to move without an external event, just because it's time. For both cases, the ESP32 offers similar methods. The hardware of the chip monitors pins or a timer, independently of the processor. Only if this monitor discovers a specific event, it signals to the processor, Hello, I discovered an agreed event. This function is fast, simple and does not need a lot of energy. We only have to enable it and tell it upfront which pattern it has to monitor. For example, if we want to be triggered by rising or falling signals or by a particular timer. Then we have to write a part in our sketch where we define what it has to do after the signal was discovered. For example, count the events, connect to Wi-Fi and send a message, read a sensor or create a reaction on another pin like to switch a motor. Let's create a small example for fast speed. A simple frequency counter. It should count all pulses during one second and display the result as the measured frequency on an LCD. We can do it the conventional way. Read an input pin and count up if we detect an edge. I use here a simple state machine to detect the edge. Not the fastest way, but I'm a fan of state machines. Each second the count is displayed as frequency because the frequency is the number of counts per second. In this sketch, we also see the basic principle to avoid delay statements. We compare millis with the last time we entered the display routine. And if it's longer than 1000 milliseconds, for example, we display the value. Simple. The code always loops and can supervise our pin. Let's check our frequency counter in reality. We start by counting 10 Hertz and we get 10 Hertz. Cool, our frequency counter works. But how about one kilohertz? It shows 999 Hertz, not too bad. At 10 kilohertz, it shows a stable 9,996 Hertz, still okay. At 100 kilohertz, the result starts to move around a little and the frequency shown is too low. The error is already considerable. At 200 kHz and 300 kHz, the error is bigger, but it still counts. At 400 kHz, it shows a completely wrong result. It is no more capable of detecting all signal changes. Not too bad for such a simple sketch. 
a proof that the ESP32 is a speedy processor. But of course, the CPU is always used and as soon as we would start to do something else in the loop, we would lose counts already at low frequencies. What if we could count the events independently from the loop? This is why interrupts were invented. They interrupt the loop wherever it is, save all the relevant data in a particular place called stack or heap and execute a different function. As soon as this function is finished, the processor reloads all data and gives control back to the loop. If this function is short, your sketch does not recognize it. It runs like in parallel. This is why these functions must not contain time-consuming commands like serial print or delay statements, for example. Enabling such an interrupt is simple. First, we have to attach an interrupt service routine, short ISR, to the same signal pin as before. The command contains three elements, the pin number, the name of the ISR to call, and the event. We can trigger on rising or falling edges. After that command, the ISR is called every time the pin goes high. Automatically. Let's look at the ISR itself. It consists of only one command. Count plus plus. Each time it is called, the counter is counted one up. Simple, because the rest is done in hardware. There are a few tricks with interrupts. You do not need to understand the details. First, we have to write volatile before all variables used in ISRs. And second, we have to insert this line before setup and these two lines as the first and the last statements in the ISR. Done. They make sure that nothing bad happens. Our loop is much simpler now. Just display every 1000 milliseconds the count and reset it. And it works more precisely than before. It still fluctuates at higher frequencies and stops working at around 200 kHz. Lower than before. Very strange. There is an easy way to discover what happens. We add these two commands in the ISR to toggle a pin and attach channel 2 of the oscilloscope to this pin. On channel 1, we connect the input signal. This is, by the way, the method of choice to debug fast real-time systems. Toggle pins at various points in your code and watch them with your oscilloscope or your logic analyzer. At 1 kHz, our counter shows the exact value. If we look at the oscilloscope, we see the input signal in yellow and the short peaks in green. If we store the signal, we see that the time from the input signal to the reaction of the ISR, called latency of the interrupt, is a little above 3 microseconds. Quite slow for a CPU with a 240 MHz clock rate. According to Ivan from Espressive, this is due to the architecture of the chip. If we look at the signals in real time, we see something strange. The latency is not stable. Not good for real-time systems where we have to count on a stable and short latency. If we go up with a frequency, the period of the input signal gets shorter and shorter and the spike gets closer and closer to the next edge. And because the latency is variable, it sometimes is even longer than the signal period which means that we lose one count. This behavior starts already before 200 kHz. If we increase the frequency even more, the ESP crashes. This is probably because a next interrupt is generated while the ISR is running. Many processors allow disabling interrupts during an ISR. Unfortunately, I did not find this feature for the ESP32. Maybe you know how it can be done. With disabling interrupts during the ISR, it would only show us the wrong results. So the verdict is clear. The ESP32 cannot be used for fast, real-time applications. But we were able to create a simple frequency counter. You can imagine that such functionality can be used for many other scenarios like measuring speeds of a motor, measuring wind speeds, etc. 
Another advantage of interrupts is that we can add more to the loop without disturbing our frequency counting. For example, I can add a second counter on line 3. It counts up without disturbing our frequency counter. It looks like both counters work independently and in parallel. But the ESP32 can do more. We could add a timer interrupt to our frequency counter to make things even simpler and more accurate. For that we add a second ISR, just as before. It has only two lines. Because we will run this ISR every second, we just store the frequency value and set the counter to zero. Just as we did before in the loop. To make it work, we have to add three similar lines as before. Just copy them and you are OK. In addition, we have to enable the timer interrupt with these four lines. Here you define a prescale factor and here the divider. It is simple. The initial frequency is 80 MHz. We divide it by 80 and afterward by 1 million. And we get 1 second. Just change these numbers if you need a different time. That's it. The ESP32 will now monitor the input pin, count up when an edge is detected and every second stores the frequency value. Our loop is now straightforward. Display and delay. You see right, we can use delay without any problem now. The timing is done under the hood. The top frequency unfortunately is not higher because our counting is still the same. One word of caution if you use Wi-Fi. Your interrupt timing can be influenced by the Wi-Fi functionality. This is why I switched it off for these experiments. You see, with interrupts we can react quite fast to events and also in the background. But the ESP32 has to be always on and therefore consumes power all the time. We have a second similar possibility. Deep sleep and wake up. Also here, hardware outside the processor monitors pins or timers and reacts when a predefined event takes place. But the processor does not execute other stuff in loop. It sleeps the whole time and only wakes up after an event occurred. As before, we can use external and timed wake-ups. And you can not only use standard pins, you can also use touch sensors, etc. Let us now build a counter for people. To save energy, we only want to send a message every 10 persons. For that, we need a counter which does not lose its value during sleep. And after the counter reaches 10, we trigger a function that sends a message. After deep sleep, the sketch always starts in setup and never reaches loop. Because we send it to sleep at the end of setup. So, the setup part is comparable with the ISR from before. Let's try it out. I use the function generator to simulate a steady flow of people by sending short impulses to pin 5. And we use the code from the ESP32 examples. The loop is empty and the last line in setup is ESP deep sleep start. After that statement, the ESP will sleep well as long as you want until the next person comes and has to be counted. Right after the event, the ESP32 starts to run the same way as after a power-up. First, it initializes serial and prints the wake-up reason. Then it increases the count and goes to sleep again. By the way, I had to declare the variable count with a preceding RTC data attribute to make sure it is stored in RTC memory. This memory survives deep sleep, but not power down. I also added a statement to set pin 17 to high for debugging. I do not set it to low, because this is automatically done when the CPU goes for a nap. Like that, we can monitor how long the CPU works. I also added a check for the wake-up reason to make sure the counter only counts the events produced by our people counter. After 10 people, it calls send message. For this video, I just update the display, but we could start Wi-Fi and send an MQTT message to a broker. 
The backlight of the display goes off and on for a moment when a new count is written to the display. As a proof. If we want to optimize the power consumption, we have to reduce the time the CPU is on. So we take out all not needed statements. Our sketch is now very short. How long does it take from the wake up signal till the ESP starts to work? This latency is a little more than 140 microseconds. Much longer than before, of course. The code itself runs very fast. To check the power consumption, I use my OTI. We see two main phases with different power consumptions. And the total length is also 150 microseconds. This diagram shows that the ESP32 processor starts to consume energy as soon as it gets the wake up call. First a little less and afterwards the full 80 mA. Everything without Wi-Fi of course. To count one person consumes 9 microwatt hours. Every tenth person it takes of course longer because the message has to be displayed. So we built a low power consuming person counter. Of course, it is much slower than the one using interrupts, but it needs less current. You can also use a timer to create a wake up. It works very similarly. You just start the timer before you set the ESP32 to sleep. Here again, you see that the ESP32 is not optimized for a fast wake up. Other processor architectures are faster in this respect. This was all for today. Summarized, we saw that interrupts are handy to monitor events. They interrupt a running sketch to do something different. You should use them instead of digital read whenever possible. They reduce the complexity of your sketches and are simple to implement if you know how. Interrupt service routines have to be as short as possible. Never, never use serial print statements or delays in such functions. We can use two simple statements plus an oscilloscope to debug real-time sketches. The interrupt latency of the ESP32 is significant and, even worse, unstable. So pay attention if you want to use it in fast applications. It can crash your MCU. Deep sleep and wake up work very similar to interrupts. The main difference? The sleep is interrupted, not a running program. The wake up time of the ESP32 is not short and consumes some energy. So it's not ideal for extremely low power applications. We can use variables stored in the RTC memory to shorten the sketch if we do not need to transfer every result. We can use timed wake ups for regular events. Also here, we could read a sensor and only send a message when its value is dangerous. Like that we can reduce the time and energy the sketch needs. If you need even more power reduction, you can use the ultra low power processor of the ESP32 shown in video number 252. And there is a third possibility between the two using so called stops. Unfortunately I did not find information on how to use it in the Arduino IDE. These long latencies may be related to the fact that the ESP32 uses an RTOS operating system. But I'm not sure. As always, you find all relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.